In this video, I'm going to explain the basics of rotor strength for helicopters. This includes calculating the centrifugal forces and then sizing the rotor hub and blades. Centrifugal forces are the largest forces in a helicopter and they are vital in keeping the craft in the air. In some helicopters, the blades are hinged in such a way that the only thing keeping the blades from folding up vertical is the centrifugal force. This is why rotor RPM is so important and if it drops below a certain level, a horn will be heard notifying the pilot. I'm going to use my helicopter as an example and the first thing I needed to do was find out the centrifugal force involved for a given rotor RPM. To do this we need to know the location of the blade's centre of mass. I've done a video on finding this which I will link in the description. Centrifugal force is given by the formula F equals mv squared divided by r, where F is the centrifugal force in newtons, m is the mass in kilograms, v is the tangential velocity in meters per second, and r is the radius of the centre of mass in meters. The tangential velocity is just the speed of the blade at the centre of mass. To work out this velocity, we simply take our blade radius at the centre of mass, which is, in my case was 1.115 metres. If we times that by 2 to get the rotor diameter, and then times that by pi to get the circumference, then times that by the rotor RPM, we get the tangential velocity of 5,464 metres per minute which is 91 meters per second. Now if we plug the figures into the centrifugal force formula, 3 times 91 squared divided by 1.115, we get 22,280 newtons, which converts to 2.272 metric tons. In my case, for a coaxial helicopter, each rotor blade will have a 2.27 ton horizontal load which will equate to four and a half tons for two rotors. And the weight of the helicopter being less than one sixteenth of this means the horizontal centrifugal forces are far greater than the vertical weight pulling down on them. This is how you work out the blade coning angle. It's just trigonometry using the two forces. The only difference in a coaxial is the weight is shared between four blades instead of the usual two. Now we know what force is being exerted on the rotor hub, we can run some numbers on the rotor design. The material I'm using is 6082T6 aluminium and you can look up the data on this material. The figures I got were a tensile yield strength of 36,300 psi and a fatigue strength of 14,000 psi. PSI stands for pounds per square inch and it is the maximum number of pounds one square inch of material is able to withstand during that test. The yield strength is when the material starts to permanently deform and the fatigue strength is the stress a material can withstand for a given number of cycles. For my hub, taken at the weakest point, we have a cross-sectional area of 1064mm squared, which is 1.649 inches squared. Then we take our fatigue strength of 14,000 pounds and times it by the cross-sectional area to get 10.5 metric tons. This gives a factor of safety of four and a half times the strength needed. My hubs are over-engineered and could be lighter, but should be very safe. But bear in mind that a hole drilled through a plate is a stress riser and strength will be compromised to some degree. You can do the same calculation on rotor blades. Where the blades are sandwiched between an upper and lower blade strap, the friction created can be much higher than the shear strength of the bolts but bolt shear strength should be taken as the value required. Where bolts are holding two plates, this is called double shear and the shear strength is doubled. Some home builders guess the forces and rotor hub strength required based on experience, but the basic calculations are relatively simple and certainly good to check. The factor of safety you choose is up to you, but rotor hubs and blades are not parts to skimp on material for obvious reasons. I hope this helps someone to build a safe rotor system. Until next time, Cheerio!